Let's bring in an old friend of this program, Mark Manduka. Uh, he used to talk to us about airlines. Now he's getting his hands dirty uh, in terms of the spin out here. He is uh, GXO's chief investment officer now. Mark, thank you very much indeed, as ever, for your time. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the numbers that you think this business can generate. You're really positive. Uh, you think we're going to be seeing a, a really solid margin number. EBITDA margins, uh, 8 to 9 percent, circa that kind of level. How are you having the confidence that this is going to be what this business can do? You're a very kind guy for the intro. Um, this business is, is going to be growing this year at the midpoint at around 30% on EBITDA. And next year, we forecast around 14 to 20%. So this is not just a, a flash in the pan post-pandemic play. This is something that is more secular than that. And let me explain it to you in very simple terms. The reason I've moved here is because <laughs> the warehousing industry, the contract logistics market, is heading towards four tenants, scale, global, good balance sheets, and technologically advanced. This is a hugely, hugely fragmented market, and it's going to become a winner-takes-all market in this new e-commerce veneer that we're entering. There are three big secular drivers underpinning that growth that I'm talking about. It's outsourcing, it's automation, mm -hmm. and it's e-commerce. And that's what's underpinning those growth drivers. Uh, hey, Mark, it's great to talk to you. Congratulations on a new gig, by the way. Um, Two-thirds of the revenue uh, you, comes from Europe, one-third from North America. What's going to be the growth rate? How quickly can you grow those two segments? So in terms of organic revenue, we're, we're forecasting about 8 to 12 percent. But that's, where the, that's organic. Mm. That's new business. That's pricing power. That's volume growth from e-commerce, which makes up, by the way, Alex, 40 percent of our revenue. So we're right in the right place at the right time. When it comes to thinking about the inorganic growth opportunity, I think we're focused as a business on the organic side because there's just so much to play for. But on the inorganic side, it's very rare to have our scale in this market. We're the second biggest contract logistics player in the world. So we could potentially be a consolidator in this space. We've got the balance sheet to do it if the right multiples come along and the right opportunities present themselves. So it's an organic story and it's an inorganic story and it's all being done at exceptionally high returns. You acquired KNL's uh, KNN's Kudanagel's contract business recently. Is that the model? Is that the kind of deal that we should be looking for? If if you talk about this idea that you can do both organic and inorganic, the market is is so fragmented below us and DHL. The reality is, it's always only going to be bought on deals in nature, guy. You know, when you're when you're as big as we are with 900 warehouses, yep. circa and about 100,000 employees, you're always going to effect, effectively run a bolt-on type deal. You know, number two, number two player in the world is, is, is where we are right now. We're big, as, as Alex mentioned, in both Europe, two-thirds, North America, one-third. But yes, I sense that if we are going to engage in inorganic growth, it's going to come from the bolt-on side rather than doing something more wholesale. Hey, Mark, what's going to disrupt your thesis? Like, what's the thing that keeps you up at night? I think there are a number of things going on in the world right now, which obviously are problems in the supply chain. You actually brought it up, I believe, last time with, with, with Malcolm, the CEO. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about the supply chain pressures that we're seeing. We've seen a lot of that talk at the weekend. We've seen warehouse prices go up. We've talked about inflation uh, on, on the ground floor in regards to the teams that are seeing it. Uh, there's, there's a number of things that, that are a concern for our industry. But here's how I would spin it. And I would say to you, this is, these are exactly the reasons. The problems in the supply chain today are exactly the reasons why third-party logistics is going to be a big, big growth area for the next five to ten years. Effectively, supply chains are becoming more and more complex, and that 70% of the market that is still sitting on our customer's balance sheet, i.e. being in-house essentially, is waiting to be outsourced as people want to refocus their energies towards their own businesses rather than managing increasingly complex and automated supply chains. They need us, and we're here to provide a service at GXO. Just in terms of the verticals, though, can you break it down for me? How much of that is, is e-commerce? How much of that is logistics areas in other places within the retail space? Which of the verticals do you see growing fastest? E-commerce, obviously, has been a huge beneficiary of what has happened with the pandemic. In terms of our growth area, uh, e-commerce, obviously, as you, as you say, underpins a lot of our growth, 40% of our sales, as I mentioned. We've also got a big consumer skew in our business, guys. So food and beverage makes up 13%, consumer packaged goods is 13%, and consumer tech, which I would argue is, is slightly in the e-commerce bucket, is also 11%. So basically, more than three-quarters of our business is in non-industrial end markets. So 
back to what I said before, right place at the right time. Our business is also very diversified, so we have no single customer making up more than 4% of our revenues. When it comes to thinking about growth, one of the things that I always say is, is it's the high value added services that we offer the customers. And one of those is returns management. Guy, when your family buys anything online, the typical average is to return a one in three things that you buy. Mm -hmm. And what that means is someone has to manage that. That's really complex for your average business. And that's where we step in. That's a high area for growth. If it's done well, it can be incredibly margin accretive for any business. And it goes back to my point about how you can drive a very high return business by essentially solving customer problems. Our returns are in the high 20s, just to contextualize, along with all that growth that I talked about at the start. Wow, it's a huge number. Um, Mark, last question, and you kind of hinted at this, um, but specifically when it comes to workers, what's that like for you guys right now? The nice thing about, I mean, inflation is never a nice topic, let's be sure. honest. Um, in the context of things, we're providing a real service, so inflation over time shouldn't be a problem for our business. But it's even less of a problem for our business, because although we are seeing inflation, and it's not just in the port of Los Angeles, it's worker inflation, as your question referred to, Alex. Both East Coast and West Coast, parts of the UK as well, we're beginning to see early signs of inflation. Now, the reality is inflation is probably going to be here to stay. But in our contracts, what we find is customers are coming to us and wanting to pay inflation almost before it happens. They want to have motivated workers on the floor. And on top of that, it's also written in our contracts. We're inflation hedged, essentially. Not only is our real estate liability matched to our contracts, the inflation of our workforce is also written into our contract, such as our customers pay that. So we are protected in that regard as a business, but I know your question was a bigger, a bigger, more global question. Mm. Yeah, we're all trying to figure out exactly what's happening with the wage story. The Fed's certainly paying a great deal of attention to that. So useful insight, Mark. Thank you very much indeed. Looking forward to hearing more as this business progresses towards that spin-off. Mark Manduka, GXO, Chief Investment Officer.